Hello everyone, last time I left you on the ramp abandoned alone and desolate like the profile of a juggalo on Tinder. Continuing our journey in the F-16, this time we're going to get into the air, learn about HUD symbology and the basics of navigation. Welcome to 4 Minute Falcon. Just to recap, we set our radio by setting the preset switch to manual. We then key in the tower frequency on the UFC and press enter. Now we should be able to hear the control tower bitching at us like an irate spouse who's just caught us shitting in the kitchen sink. Press list on the UFC and 6 for INS. For now the only information we're looking for is the ground speed during taxi which is displayed on the bottom right. The ground speed is displayed in knots and you should remain well below 25 knots when taxiing. Press T for tower and the number 8 to have your wheel chocks removed. Press T again, request taxi and remove your parking brake. There's no need to throttle up, the F-16 is so light that idle power will actually move it along. Don't wait until you're running out of taxiway before engaging nose wheel steering. Once engaged, simply use controlled left and right deflections of your rudder to stay on the taxiway. Due to the aforementioned weight, the F-16 even on idle power will rapidly gain speed, and if you don't maintain control with well-timed brake inputs, you'll lose your shit. It's advisable to study the airport charts, so you know where the runway is and at least have a notion of how to get to it. It's also vital to listen out for the runway number, as nothing pisses off ATC more than taking off on the wrong runway heading. Line up on the runway and apply your brakes. Rotation speed depends on the lowdown of the aircraft and varies between 125 and more than 167 knots. To determine rotation speed, it's best to use a weapon delivery planner, which I'll link below. Throttle up to 80%, release the brakes and engage the afterburner. Disengage nose wheel steering before 80 knots. Use your rudder to keep centered on the runway. When you reach rotation speed, gently pull back the stick and avoid scraping your tail on the runway. Once you have a positive rate of climb, retract your landing gear. Once airborne, you'll see a message at the top of your HUD reading no rad. With FCS selected in your left MFCD, click standby and then click CRM. Now your radar should be fully operational. Navigation using the HUD is quite simple. To enter nav mode, press list on the UFC, then number 4 on the numpad. You'll see a circle with a tail coming from it appear on the HUD. The tail indicates the position of the steer point relative to your aircraft. For example, if the tail is pointing up, the steer point is somewhere ahead of you. If it's pointing down, it's behind you. If pointing left, it's off to your left. If pointing right, it's off to your right. Your goal is to align the flight path marker with the current steer point. When you reach the current steer point, you need to select the next one manually by using the paddle in the bottom left of the UFC. Instantly you'll notice the tail on the steer point marker is pointing off to the right. Maneuver your aircraft until the flight path marker and steer point marker are fully aligned with the tail on the steer point marker pointing up. Now for a brief explanation of the HUD. At the very top you have the pitch scale and gun cross. This is the horizon line. This is your airspeed, airspeed tape and current G number at the top. Below the tape is your Mach number, max G since reset and current master mode. This is the heading tape and below is the roll indicator. This is the altitude scale which are current altitude on the right. At the bottom of the scale is your radar altitude. There are obviously a few different hub modes, but as this time we're just covering navigation, I'm going to stay with the basics. We can also use HSD on the right MFCD to monitor our flight plan. With the OSB buttons on the top left, we can change the scale of the HSD, maximizing the scale until the entire flight pan fits on the HSD. When you're heading back to your home base, don't forget to check in with the tower and request vector to land. Make sure you follow their instructions precisely, as they have a habit of being quite demanding. However, if you miss your chance, you may find yourself being sent around in an endless circle, like some poor idiot trying to break the world's longest rim job record. I'll cover landing in a later tutorial, because as you can see here, I definitely need the practice. There are a few things I've skipped, but I'll be going back over them when covering the relevant areas. My philosophy with this set of tutorials is akin to that of a cannibal eating an obese person. Take small amounts and often, and before you know it, you'll have down the whole thing. On that nutritious note, I thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to dislike or tell me to go fuck myself below.